I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy here with Jimmy Dore show producer Malcolm Fleshner. And here was a recent headline from Newsweek just uh, a month ago. Ukraine spring counteroffensive has very good chance of success. Lloyd Austin. So just recently, the defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, was telling Congress that Ukraine has a very good chance of success in its upcoming spring counteroffensive against Russia. And here is Lloyd Austin testifying with, with about that before Congress. With regard to your optimism about Ukraine having the upper hand, that is what you told me yesterday. It, it is. And now, what I was about to say, Senator, is that uh, Ukrainians have inflicted significant casualties uh, on, uh, on the Russians, and they have depleted their, uh, their inventory of uh, armored vehicles in a way that no one would have ever imagined. And so now we see Russia reaching for T-54s and T-55 tanks because of the level of damage that the Ukrainians have inflicted on them. And we have, uh, in the meantime, been... And reaching, to, reaching for those tanks uh, demonstrates what to you, sir? It, it demonstrates that uh, their capability is waning. And uh, it, we've, we've uh, continued uh, to witness uh, them be challenged in, uh, with uh, artillery munitions, uh, and other things, and they're reaching out to Iran, they're reaching out to uh, to North Korea. Uh, so uh, I, I think, you know, we'll see an, an, an increase in the fighting in the spring as uh, conditions for maneuver improve. And uh, based upon the, the things that we've done and continue to do, I think uh, Ukraine will have a real good chance. Do you, do you believe, yeah, we're, we're uh, pushed for time, sir. Do, do you believe there's a real chance for significant Ukrainian advancements uh, between now and uh, and the beginning of winter. I believe that there's a chance, and we're doing everything that we can do to uh, ensure that they have their best opportunity to be successful, Senator. All right, so that is late March of this year. The Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin tells Congress that he believes Ukraine has a very good chance of success in its planned counteroffensive. And that Russian capability is waning. That's what he told Congress just one month ago. Well, then what happened? Then shortly afterwards, we get the Pentagon leaks. These leaks showing up on the internet from the Pentagon, giving us a much different picture. In fact, the exact opposite picture. Here's a headline. U.S. doubts Ukraine counteroffensive will yield big gains, leaked document says. It's a market departure from the Biden administration's public pronouncements about the vitality of Ukraine's army and is likely to embolden critics calling for negotiations to end the war. So you have in public the Pentagon saying one thing, including to Congress under oath in private in these leaked documents saying something much different. Here's some more detail from the Washington Post. Ukraine's challenges in massing troops, ammunition, and equipment could cause its military to fall well short of Kiev's original goals for an anticipated counteroffensive, according to U.S. intelligence assessments revealing Washington's misgivings about the state of the war. Labeled talk secret, the bleak assessment from early February. Now, that was before Lloyd Austin went before Congress. So Lloyd Austin presumably had seen these assessments, but told Congress something much different. Warns of significant force generation and sustainment shortfalls and the likelihood that such an operation will result in only modest territorial gains. So note what Lloyd Austin told Congress, something much different. He said they have a very good chance of success in taking territory back. Privately, the Pentagon sees something far differently. It's a marked departure from the Biden administration's public statements about the vitality of Ukraine's military and is likely to embolden critics who feel the U.S. and NATO should do more to push for a negotiated settlement to the conflict. Who are those critics? That's us. That's here on the Jimmy Dore Show. That's the gray zone. That's the small sliver of leftists. Uh, who have been critical of the proxy war from the start, and some people on the right who also have uh, pushed for negotiations. But everybody else, the bipartisan war establishment, has been totally ignoring those voices to the point when, remember back when progressives for 24 hours wrote a letter asking the, the White House very politely to push for negotiations? They were told to shut up and they withdrew their letter. Well, now you have more evidence that they were exactly right in writing that letter because the Pentagon privately agrees with them that Ukraine has little chance of success and that's why we should have diplomacy to end this war. So just compare these two headlines. This is, again, this is Ukraine. Spring counteroffensive has very good chance of success. Lloyd Austin. A few weeks later, U.S. doubts Ukraine counteroffensive will yield big gains. You see the contrast right there between what we're told in public and what is revealed privately. And this, also, this shows 
a very simple fact, and this is what I wrote on my Substack. Leaks confirm the Biden administration has lied about Ukraine because they're telling us one thing in public and privately admitting something far different. And this is presumably why the Biden administration did not want the public and the media to look at those leaks. This is John Kirby, White House spokesperson. Again, without confirming the validity of the documents, this is information that has no business in the public domain. It has no business, if you don't mind me saying, uh, on the pages of uh, of uh, front pages of, of newspapers or on, on television. It is not intended for public uh, consumption, and, and it should not be out there. So this should not be out there. It is no business on the front pages of newspapers. And why is that? It's because it's showing that we're lying to you about the war in Ukraine. That's why he says it has no business for public consumption. But now, I, now that I all love this that, is- I love that. I got to tell you, Aaron, I love that clip of John Kirby because he is one step away from putting his uh, hands over his ears and saying, I am not listening. I am not listening. I am not listening, <laughs> which I think is that that's what I would guess is next for him. <laughs> and that's what he wants the media to do as well. He wants them to follow his lead. And uh, they have for the most part. I mean, that was one rare exception, the Washington Post. But a lot of these other leaks that have come out are have been done to advance the pro war line to call for more weapons for 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 ukraine and to ignore the fact that the pentagon is privately saying they have only a modest chance of success which probably is being optimistic that uh, in itself but at the end he did austin did say he, he was asked so you think there's a chance he said yeah there's a chance that's <laughs> i like that he clarified that there is a chance yeah, it's not chance. zero <laughs> but now we're seeing because these leaks have come out and because reality is sinking in slowly now we're getting more headlines like this Biden's team fears the aftermath of a failed Ukrainian counteroffensive. Behind closed doors, the administration worries about what Ukraine can accomplish. Yeah, I wonder if that's because the Pentagon told you they have no chance of success. And now they're trying to basically prepare the groundwork for a disappointment. Here's more from the New York Times. Ukraine's spring offensive comes with immense stakes for future of the war. Without a decisive victory, Western support for Ukraine could weaken and Kiev could come under increasing pressure to enter serious peace talks to end or freeze the conflict. Why aren't they under this pressure now to have peace talks and end or freeze the conflict? Because we've been lied to and told that they have a chance of success. That's why. And look at this now. Now we're seeing one more admission from the Pentagon. This is just this week. Russian ground forces bigger today than at the start of the war in Ukraine, U.S. General says, and this is a uh, the commander uh, of the European command of the U.S. European Command. Russian ground force has been has been uh, uh, degenerated somewhat by this conflict, although it is bigger today than it was at the beginning of the conflict. Um, the air force has lost very little; they've lost eighty planes. They have another thousand fighters and fighter bombers. The navy has lost one ship. Um, um, so they still use all of that conventional power as well, and they mix them all together, sir. So that is General Christopher Cavoli. He's the commander of the U.S. European Command, admitting in a congressional hearing that the Russian army is stronger today than it was at the start of this war. But yet we, Aaron, do you, do you think that he knows Lloyd Austin? Have they spoken before? <laughs> they uh, they they met each other before? Because they should they should talk. <laughs> Yes, they should. Well, the problem is, and imagine if we had had honest disclosures like that and like we got in those Pentagon leaks from the start of this war, rather than being told for more than a year now that Ukraine's on the march, that Russia is almost defeated. All we have to do is send in, keep sending more weapons in and Russia will be uh, defeated. Instead, we've been told the exact opposite. And now we're getting to a point where it's it's hard to contain the lies anymore. So even the Biden administration has had to put out these leaks saying that they're preparing for the whole thing to collapse and and then what but just imagine malcolm if we've been told this truth from the start well that would be a first uh, do you remember aaron in the iraq war how it became a running joke that uh we were going to turn the corner in iraq in six months it was thomas friedman of the new york times was became the laughing stock and the butt of jokes because of a so-called friedman unit it was he, he repeatedly wrote comments saying the next six months are going to tell the tale in iraq and, and he did this over and over and over <laughs> again as the war proceeded 2003 2004 2005 2006 yeah. it was always six months away and i wonder if we're going to get into that sort of dance here with ukraine also that now we're looking for the spring offensive the spring offensive won't happen or it won't result than anything it's like okay we got to hunker down for but now we're really we're really drawing out we're you know the the russians are really depleted 
they're so depleted their army is stronger than ever it's that depleted it's uh it's confusing over there everything's different and uh and so we'll just we'll I mean that will and the biden administration has no incentive to be honest with us uh, and never didn't then doesn't now about how the war is going so as long as they can keep and because they need the the 2024 elections coming up and then it's gonna be the midterms as long as if assuming he wins and so they will just keep stringing us along and stringing us along at least because they've done that before and i can't see uh, what other options do they have yeah they have to be thinking now do we end the war before 2024 before the primaries or do we cross our fingers and hope that we we can just ride it out that the war will outlast the elections and then we can admit defeat that that, that's got to be their calculation right now because it's not looking very good, and there hasn't. There, there's been a bit of, of a lull uh, on the Ukrainian side. Russia has done this winter offensive where they have been attacking Bakhmut, but Russia is also expected to. Well, I, sh- I shouldn't say actually. I have no idea what what Russia will do, but it's just it's crazy that a the outcome of a war now is so tied to a presidential campaign that basically is kicking off right now. Well, I'm I'm beginning to think that maybe drawing Russia into this war wasn't such a great idea. I mean, you know, that's just me, though. You draw your own conclusions. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special, COVID Lies Are Funny. <laughs> 